monitor a little bit, uh, Rick, please. I'm getting some kind of weird ringing. It might not be from the monitor. It might be from the mains, but either way, use that volume knob. Help me out. And then mute everybody else but me. That'll help too. Is that better? Sorry, y'all. It'll mess with me. It's, it's me. Whoa. Stand to your feet. Turn to Luke chapter 13. Y'all, I'm happy to be back. Man. How am I already short on time? I just got here. Goodness. That was y'all. They don't, that don't take my time. That's y'all's time. Y'all like, surround up. That's true. That's, my time stopped. I'm watching to see what y'all gonna do. <laughs> Did y'all like that? That's a pretty good song, right? Y'all, that's, that's been my midnight song for about three weeks now. That's been my, I got a little private recording of it. Mm -hmm. I just be jamming on Somebody said number three. That's number three that y'all know. That's like number seven, right? <laughs> we got We working, y'all. Y'all ready for our album? That's gonna be something. That's gonna, another one. Another one. It's gonna be something. Um, I'm trying to get the worship songs out the way. You know, like for y'all, it's an album. For me, it's a sound. And if I can get the sound of our house, like if we can capture the sound of our house, that's my goal. It's not to write a bunch. We could just write a bunch of songs. See? We could sing other people's songs. Looking for the sound of our house. Looking for what our house sounds like when the music stops. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 13. They didn't put no more time on my clock. That's okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you relax, Corinne. I don't. <laughs> she said, yes, I did. <laughs> what? See, I, if I had a hundred of you. No, okay. All right. All right. All right. Huh. Can we read this together? This will, it'll bless my heart if we could just read this together. Okay? Y'all look at the screen. Here we go. We're going to all read together. We ready? We ready? All right, here we go. One, two, three, read. Come on. Who said vine yard? <laughs> seven, let's go. Seven, let's go. Let's go. And he said to the vine yard. <laughs> Behold. Yeah. Uh huh. Lord, have mercy. Come on. Okay. All right. Why does it even use up the ground? All right. Come on. Let's keep going, too. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory. I thank you for another year. I thank you for another opportunity. I thank you that I didn't get cut down last year, Lord Jesus, but you kept me another year. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. Lord, help me help them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. High five three people and say, let's start a new one. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Good, 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 good. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to start a new series. I, 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 I haven't preached in like seven weeks. So if I'm rusty, y'all forgive me, man. Okay? If I'm, if I'm rusty, y'all. I need a little oil. It's cool, cool, cool. Hey, I told I told Pastor Kevin I said in the last seven weeks you out preached me three times you you because I didn't preach any and he preached three times so that's <laughs> but I was like man you you know you you was killing it these last few weeks so now I gotta give I gotta get at least that no I'm just kidding all right uh, I want I want to help you guys today um. Th- this particular text is one of my favorite texts in the Bible. I say that all the time. This particular text is one of my favorite texts in the Bible. It is an amazing text, and it is a parable, right? It is a parable. Now, oftentimes, a parable is just a, it's a, it's a story that Jesus is using to illustrate something. The, the, the Bible, is particularly when Jesus is talking in the New Testament, he will use something that you can understand. To explain something that you can't understand, right? He'll use something that you can understand to explain something that you can't, you can't, uh, you can't understand. The kingdom of heaven cannot be understood. That's why it frustrates me to hear preachers talk about the kingdom of heaven. The, the whole point is parables. The whole point of parables is he says the kingdom is like. Remember we talked about this. Tastes like chicken. Everything tastes like chicken. Until you have it and you realize it don't taste like, right? They say frog legs taste like chicken until you have frog legs. Then you realize they don't taste like chicken. But to somebody who only had chicken, the best way to describe it. Okay, are y'all with me so far? So what Jesus is doing is he's describing things that, that you couldn't possibly understand. He's describing an, an, an idea that you couldn't possibly understand. And he uses this simple parable about a, an owner, a vine yard dresser, a vineyard dresser <laughs> in the vine yard. I love y'all, bro. <laughs> in the vine yard. A vineyard dresser and, and, and a particular plant. Somebody say owner, a, a, a manager, a manager, y'all come with me, and a particular plant, an owner. Okay, who's the owner? We read the story together. Who's the owner? God. Okay, great. God. We, 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 we taking it out of parable A, moving it into the natural. Who's the owner? Yeah, y'all, heard, y'all read the cheat sheet already. Somebody was brave enough to say God. Now y'all like God. Okay. Who's the manager? The vine yard dresser. Huh? Courtney, was that you? No, okay. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Who's the manager? Huh? Okay, who's the vineyard keeper? Jesus. Y'all are so smart, man. That's pretty good. So who's the fig tree? Mmm, that's so good. Listen, I, I want to help you right here. The entire the the entire job for you in the Bible is to find you. You ever been somewhere, the strange place you walked up to the sign and it said, You are This is what the Bible is for you. This is what the Bible is. You should open up the Bible and say, I am here. If you don't know who the characters are, if you don't know who the characters are, then you can't possibly understand the movie. One of the things I can't stand, ooh, I love my wife to death. I blessed her all last week, so now... I love my wife to death. She sit down in the middle of the movie and say, okay, now who is that? Okay, where, where did he come from? Okay, who does, is that, are they brothers? Baby. 
I'm trying to find me right here, Jeff. I'm trying to find me right here. I came here. I can't help you. You got to be able to identify the characters. And oftentimes in your story, you misidentify the characters. A lot of times you make yourself the hero. Sometimes you make yourself the victim. But I've learned to identify myself properly in the, I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. I, I don't blame people for what I've been through. I don't blame people for where I came from. I figured out that some of my problems I created. Some of my situations, some of my mess, it's, it's my fault. I know how to properly identify myself. Okay, okay, okay. But I, I do want to posit to you something that that, that, that could be wrong. That God might not be the owner. Because Jesus, Jesus identifies himself as God. But he also identifies himself as the vine dresser. So in some situations, God is the owner. Jesus is the vine dresser. And you are the fig tree. In other situations, Jesus God is the owner. You are the manager and your life. Oh, it's different now because now I'm responsible for what happens with my own life. It's so easy to preach about Jesus when I remove your responsibility. It's so easy for me to stand in here and talk about Jesus and remove you from the context. Now, everything that's ever happened to you, somebody did to you. Or somebody didn't do. I said to two times, people always either tell me, oh, PD, you don't know what they did to me. And oftentimes what I tell you is it's not what they did to you. It's what they didn't do for you that you expected. So your own expectation is getting you in trouble. You created a false sense of expectation. I wanted, I, I wanted him to love me. That's your false sense of expectation. Did y'all enter into an agreement? Oh yeah, we're not that new. Did y'all enter into an agreement? Because a lot of times what happened is you gave without an agreement. And now you're disappointed. But y'all never agreed. We too young to be married. Well, y'all too young to be doing whatever else y'all doing. Back to the vineyard. <laughs> y'all might as well cut that clock off. Uh, back, back to the vineyard. Okay, so, so, so what you got to do is be able to find yourself in the Bible. And that's why you dig. Okay, that's why you dig. The most important thing for you to do when you read your Bible is dig. Okay, you see I said when you read your Bible. Because you should read your Bible. Man cannot live by God chasing text alone. You're going to have to read it for yourself. I know y'all trust me, but that's why we put it up on the screen. So you don't have to trust me. You got to read it for yourself because something happens when you read the word. The Bible says the word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And as I'm reading that word, it's changing something on the inside of me. As I'm digging into the word, the word is changing something on the inside of me. So I got to figure out how to dig. I got to figure out how to dig. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want you guys, as we get into this surrounded series, I want you guys to learn how to dig. You in there. Your story in there. Yo, this, this is what I love about the Bible. You can always find you. You can always find you right in the middle of the mess. You say, that's me right there. Peter, don't know how to shut up, lie all the time, and cuss sometimes. I looked at him, I said, boy, that boy is so familiar. 
But I, I, I need you to understand something. If you want to hear from God, you got to dig. You got to dig into the word. If you want a miracle, you got to dig. If you need a blessing, you got to dig. If, you, if you're not able to find you, then you won't be able to find your way out if you can't dig. Are y'all with me? Okay, okay. So, 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 so uh, a man had a fig tree. A man owned a vineyard, and he had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard. And he came out looking for fruit on this. I, I need y'all to get some of this, okay? I, I'm just going to try to go through this little running expositional commentary on, on this text, and then I'm going to let y'all go, and y'all can go eat chicken, okay? Okay? Or frog legs, whatever you like, okay? Y'all know me too good. Don't Wait. Okay, <laughs> so, so a man came out to a fig tree. Now, I've seen this picture before, Dominique. I've seen this picture of a man who came to a fig tree and was disappointed. There's a picture of this in the Bible. In, in Matthew, there, there's a man named Jesus. He walks up to a fig tree. And, and the Bible says that the fig tree, even though it wasn't time for the fig tree to have fruit, it had leaves premature. Oh, I could preach this right here. It had leaves premature. So Jesus said, well, if it's got leaves, it's supposed to have fruit. What he said was, based on how it looks, it should have fruit. Based on my church outfit, I should have fruit. Based on how, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I got the leaves. Where's the? F oh, I go, I know how to go to the prayer meetings. I've figured out this little, pick them up, put them down. I can do all that, but I don't have love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, kindness. I, do I have those things? Do I say, hey, Gladys? <laughs> not Gladys. I'll be trying not to say some of y'all names. Hey, Gladys. Them shoes, show this cute. All right, I'll see you later. She knows she's too old to be wearing them. Either. She don't know what she's doing. Oh, she out here looking like a sex worker in these shoes. Blessed and highly favored, but I got anxiety as soon as I get in my car. As soon as I, oh yeah, let's deal with the real stuff. You ain't got depression, you depressed. That's two different things. Depression is a state of being. You just upset. I got depression. No, you don't. I'm trying to help you right here. But what we do, what we do is we put on the, we put on the, 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 the pretend and, and Jesus gets upset because he walks out to uh, what looks like it should have fruit and it's barren. Jesus is upset. He is upset because did you know that God has an expectation for your life? I want to just start right here. Do you know that God expects something from you? And not only does he expect it, he expects it in the time that he's requested. The Bible said this young, he said he went out. He said, three years I've been putting up with her. I mean, three years I've been dealing with this. How long you going to still cuss? It was cute at first. I'm, you know, you see the meme. I'm saved, but I still cuss a little. Somebody had a t-shirt that said, I'm saved, but I'll fight. You, 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 this is incorrect. You need to check the first line. Are you really saved? Because after some time, God should have an expectation about what's happening in your life. Oh, yeah, I'm y'all's pastor. I didn't come here to hype y'all up. I could be like, God's going to do it. No, 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 no. Are you really saved? Are you really walking it out? Or do you just have leaves? Have you learned the right thing to say at the right moment? Because nobody knows. Do you just have leaves? 
Lord, I'm so grateful. Lord, you've been so good to me. I just can't tell it all. Surround us. And you ain't paid a tithe in three years. You ain't been able to put 10% together. You ain't been able to put a dime together in three years. You can't. Re- if you're a visitor, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so grateful. You can come back next week. We're going to get real good into this. But I want to talk about where you are in this season. Where you are, because you can fake it with us, but you can't fake it with God. You can't fake it with God. God don't. See, 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 God is going to start digging around your life in this next season and pulling out things that you know shouldn't have been there. God, he revealed this to me while, while I was on break, that God is about to start opening not only your eyes, but my eyes to some of your antics. Because this is the season for growth. And if you're not growing, what's it all for? If you're not growing, you're still in somebody's seat. Somebody else could be sitting there. Somebody else could be in charge of that ministry. Somebody else could be built. Oh, hear me right here. Somebody else is waiting for you to, because you, you, you in the way. Pastor, I've been in the way 30 years. Yeah, you've been in the way 30 years. It's time to grow up. Somebody say it's time to grow up. Oh, y'all wanted me to be nice today. See, the problem is not that you're fruitless, but it's that you're faking. God's not mad that you're fruitless. He's mad because you're faking. God's not upset because you're fruitless. He's upset because, because, because you're trying to make it look like you... When you know you need to just live a life of surrender. When you need to live a life turned over to him. I'm just looking for two or three people who said, I'm just going to be honest. I don't have it all together. I haven't figured it all out. God's still working on me. I'm not going to be in here faking like I got fruit that I don't. See, 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 see. When you have a fig tree, and I want want, want to do something. Give give me. Two seconds, I'm going to bring out some, I need y'all to understand this. When you have a fig tree, see, a fig tree, a fig tree, before that fig is mature, is poisonous. Does that make sense? So an immature fig will kill you. So if you got mature leaves, but immature figs, you're a danger to somebody. You got to have mature fruit to match the mature... All right, all right, all right. The the immature, say this, the immature is not edible. It's time to grow up. So the text here shows us that God can get disappointed. He can be upset. But but see, when God's disappointed, it's not like when you're disappointed. He don't go sit in his car and listen to Luther. (laughs) Listen to some old music. No, when God gets disappointed, he makes a plan. When God gets upset, he makes a plan. And so he goes to the vine dresser and he says, yo, this, this particular fig tree has not produced fruit. This particular fig tree have not produced fruit. And, 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 and the vine dresser says this. He says, he says, okay, all right. I know it's not producing, but, but, but before you cut it down, before you cut it out, let me do something about it, okay? I'm an expert right here. I'm an expert. Oh, Jesus. I'm an e- And again, if you think the vine dresser is Jesus, that's fine. Because yes, Jesus is an expert on, on bringing us out. He, Jesus brought me out of, of the muck and the mire. Yes, I agree with you. But, but I'm an expert on my own life. And maybe it's possible that your life is your responsibility. So Jesus, Jesus shows up and he says, look. He says, how long are you going to be doing this? How, how long are you going to be messing with him? How, how, how long are you going to be smoking that? Because I gave you the power uh, to be delivered. And what you're, doing, what you're doing right here is you're making my power seem powerless. Coming to church over and over and never changing. You might as well watch the Cowboys. 
I came to help y'all today. I want a change in my life. I want to see a change in my life. I don't come here just, to, I love all y'all. I don't come here just to hang out though. I come here because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron and so does one man sharpens the countenance of another man. I need to hang out with Tammy so she can sharpen my countenance and so I can sharpen her countenance. And this is, this is why we, this is why we need each other. This is why we need fellowship. But we too busy trying to make up, dress, dress up, fake up our lives to have somebody to be able to help us. Have somebody be able to. Are y'all with me today? Is this too hard? We can't. This is. This is okay, so I, I want to I show y'all something. Can you bring out my fig tree, please? Okay. So, 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 the, I, I, I want to help you with something because oftentimes we start to look at the problems at the, at the fruit, but the problem is not at the fruit, it's at the root. Bring the bucket too, please. Okay? The problem is not at the fruit, it's at the root. Now, y'all see this? Okay, I couldn't find a fig tree. This is the next best thing. This is an olive tree. Okay. I was like, okay, God, well, that'll work because I want to talk about pressing anyway. I want to talk about anointing anyway. And it, and it grows the same. They need about the same temperatures to grow. They need about the same climate to grow. And, and what I really want you to understand is this. They have a complex root system. Somebody say complex root system. So that if something is damaged up here, it's because there's a problem down here. If there's an issue up here, it's most likely because there's a problem down here. And a lot of times you think, okay, this, well, if I just pluck, oh, it's fixed. No, but, it, but, but, the, but the, this is the result of something that's happening here. If these leaves are dry, it's because, not because it's dry here, it's dry down. Oh, come on. So what Jesus says is that if it's not producing fruit, I don't really care about the fruit. I got to get down. Are y'all with me today? Okay, so, 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 so Jesus starts, he says, this is what I need to do. I need to do two things, okay? This is my two points. Y'all ready? Two points, real simple points. The first thing is I need to dig it up. Somebody say dig it up. Dig it up. This, this is an easy point to make. All the stuff, all the issues, all the drama is right down here. And I got to get, I got to figure out how to break up the follow ground. In the book of Isaiah, it says it like this. It says, if I, if I plant in the right season and then I break up the follow ground, that it'll produce some, 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 some versions say love, that it'll produce joy, that it'll produce peace. I said, oh, this is the fruit of the spirit right here. Three different versions producing three different fruits. But it's, become, it's because I broke up the follow ground. Now, I need y'all to understand something about this particular tree. This tree has reached the capacity of its root system. An olive tree is supposed to grow up to nine feet tall and about eight feet wide. But as long as it stays in this small bucket... Some of y'all have potential to be bigger, wiser, stronger than you are, but you still stuck in the same bucket. You still got the same bucket of friends. You still got the same bucket of coworkers. You still got the same, oh, but I love her. But yeah, now you, they've stunted your growth. As long as I stay in this bucket, I'm stuck. I will never reach my potential. I'll never get higher than about five feet or so because I'm stuck in a bucket. Some of y'all stuck in a poverty bucket. And round and round you go. Lord, when is income tax season again? I'm helping y'all today. Round and round I go. But if I learn how to trust God with a dime, 
I might not have to wait on the IRS to give me a thousand dollars. The root system is too complex for the bucket you in. You're going to have to break free of your buckets. Look at somebody and say, I'm breaking out this bucket. I'm breaking out this bucket. I'm too big for this bucket. Some of y'all are too big for the bucket that you... Root system is complex. And the further down the roots go, the wider the roots go, then the higher up the tree... Some of y'all, y'all, y'all bigger than never reading your Bible. That's a small bucket. They got it all kinds of ways. Now you can listen to it on YouTube or yeah. listen to it on an MP3 player or something. You need the word. Your bucket's too small. You, 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 you got to get into a place where your, your bucket can get down deep. If I leave the, this plant in this bucket, it'll never grow past this place. Hear me right here. Some of y'all got friends. Small bucket. Oh, boy, I can testify right here. Because I had people that I loved, that I lay on the train tracks for. I didn't really, I would have never let go of them. I'm so glad they let go of me. <laughs> I would have never let go of them. I'm so glad they let go. Oh, you helped me, boo-boo. Now I can stretch out a little bit. You, I didn't realize that I was in a debilitated bucket. I can stretch out a little. So I'm not going to try to mess with this right now because I'm going to make a mess. So I'm going to put this right here, but you, you got to, y'all with me, right? Y'all with me. You got to get rid of the, the bucket. So then he says, and, and he says, he says, this was already planted. Now, let me help you with this as well. The soil matters. I'm going to get in trouble for this. It's not just that you're planted. It's where you're planted. Does that make sense? It's not just that you're planted. It's where you're planted. It matters where you're planted. The soil matters. 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 It matters who you hear from. It matters who you receive from. I could, well, I could go on and on. I, I'm going to stop right here. It, 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 it matters. So you got to be in a place where you say, okay, is this good soil for me? Every tree doesn't grow in every soil. Some soil's not good for me. Okay, so I got to find my soil, Lord Jesus. That's why I can't come to church once or twice a month. I got to give, I got to stretch out in the soil. I got to stretch out in the soil. So he says, he says, I'm going to start digging around it. And I heard God say, I'm going to start digging around in some of these God chasers. I'm, I'm going to start digging around in their hearts. I'm going to start digging around in their minds. Because if I don't dig around, I can't find out what, what, what's keeping them from growing. God said, I'm about to start investigating to see what's keeping you from reaching your potential. You got to get in there and dig it up. Now, now, if I'm in charge of my life, before God has to do it, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to surrender it to him. I'm going to surrender it to him. God, I already know what you're doing. Here, 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 I already got this thing. I can't do that. Here, here you go. I, I can't make it without, and in fact, I tried to quit myself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I tried to quit by myself. It didn't work, so now I need your help to quit. And God said, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you by digging some of this stuff up. Some of y'all don't need a revelation. You need an excavation. You keep coming to church for revelation. Ooh, I wonder what PD going to say this time. I wonder what God's saying. No, it's already in here. Let me start breaking up the follow ground of your heart. Why are you so mean all the time? Why are you mad at people all the time? Why are you so angry all the time? And now you got to deal with that. And let me help you right here. A new song ain't going to get you over that. You're going to have to free yourself by doing some digging. Who, who's ready to do some? All right. So, 
So he said, I'm going to start digging up around it. Uh, I'm going to start digging up around, uh, uh, around your attitude. How do you do that, God? Well, here's how you, here's how you do it. Your boss going to come talk to you crazy. You're going to say, oh, no, he can't talk to me like, and God going to say, I'm digging. Your wife going to say something back to you. Your wife could hurt your whole feelings. <laughs> if you're married, don't, don't say nothing. Just look straight at me. We have a code. I hear you. <laughs> you'll be like, you'll be like, why you didn't wash the dishes? She said, your mama never washed the dishes. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Where'd you go? Okay, all right, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Okay, y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. Yeah, it's a move. <laughs> it's some brother right now like, yeah, yeah, dig it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I need you to understand something. The Bible says it like this. Think it not strange when you go through diverse trials. Think it not strange. It says First Peter 4 and 12, like Prego, it's in there. First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is on you. As though some strange thing is happening to you. Lord, why did this keep happening to me? I'm producing something on the end. I'm digging something. <laughs> Romans 5 and 4. You don't got to turn there like Prego. Not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces. Wait, wait, wait. Pro. Wait, wait, wait. Pro. What is fruit? Your suffering produces your fruit. You didn't go through that for nothing. You didn't go through that divorce for nothing. Oh, Jesus. You didn't go through that hard situation for nothing. You didn't go through that situation with your manager for nothing. God said, I'm producing something in you. I'm still feeding you. I'm still feeding your kids. You ain't went without. Boy, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting in here. You lost the job. You didn't lose Jesus. And the God and my Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Some of y'all never been broke. That's why you can't shout right now. I didn't lose Jesus. I lost my job. Three, I lost my job. Three weeks later, we bought a house. I didn't have a job. I had faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. Are y'all with me today? Is this too deep for y'all? I could preach some bubblegum stuff if y'all want. It could all rhyme and everything. Okay. All right. Are y'all with me? So, so God says, I, I'm, I'm about to produce. But see, in order to produce, come on, come on James. I, in order to produce, I'm going to have to not only dig it, I'm going to have to dung it. Stay right here, because you're going to lift that bag. <laughs> I'm working hard out here. He's just going to leave the bag for me to lift. I'm just kidding. Too. God said, not only am I going to dig it, then I'm going to dung it. That's what the manager says. Not only am I going to dig it, then I'm going to dung it. Well, I get the digging. What's the dunging? <laughs> see, 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 fertilizer is made from some ugly stuff. Fertilizer is made from some terrible stuff. It stinks. You, you see, smell is, a, smell is one of your senses. It has to do with how you feel. Right? Right? Taste, touch, smell. That's, this is how you feel. It has to do with my senses. And so we don't like stuff. So, sometimes God will put the stinky stuff in your life. <laughs> but he's trying to deliver you from something. Okay, he's trying to deliver you from something. Let's pour this in here. Okay, so 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 I dug. Where's my uh? I had a little garden tool. Y'all don't have that? It's okay. All right. So so God says this. He says, not only am I gonna dig around it, but then I'm gonna dunk it. See see, you gotta understand what happens with fertilizer. The first thing is there there are nitrates and nutrients in fertilizer. These things help me grow. There are some bad things you went through that helped you grow. 
I'm gonna give y'all five seconds to testify right now. You don't want nobody to know. You like, look at my leaves. It's somebody in here like, no, nah, no. Nah. It's some bad stuff I went through. It's some terrible stuff I went through, but it, it helped me grow. Thank you, James. That's enough. It's, a, it's an illustration, man. Thank you. A, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Oh, he said it stinks. Yeah. That's what happened in life. It stinks. Miscarriages stink. Divorces stink. L losing your job, getting laid off. Hey, man, that's... They even have a saying, man, that stinks. No, it really does. It's, it's, it stinks. But see, the, the, when the Bible says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, well, I can't worry about how I feel about the, this particular situation, this particular circumstance. Oh, I can preach from around this, this, this particular circumstance. See, see what happens is it, it's the circumstances of life that encircle you. That make you feel like you can't escape. That make you feel like you can't get out. That make you feel. And so what happens is you are encircled by your circumstance, right? You're encircled by your circumstance, but you haven't read the book of Psalms. Because in the book of Psalms, the Bible says he encamps his angels all around. Oh, Jesus. So give me three people real quick. Three people run up here real quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't got all day. Three people. Now give me four more people. Come on, y'all. Okay, three of y'all get around me. Turn outside. Come on. You too. Now, the four of y'all hold hands and, and circle me. Yeah. Okay. The outside group is my circumstance. But the inside group is my angelos. The Bible says his angels will encamp themselves around you. Lest you dash your foot against the stone, they will bear you up. Now, this, 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 this will really make sense if you ever smash your foot against them. Like, what was my angels? But the truth is, it didn't say it'll stop you from smashing your foot. They say when you do smash your foot... They'll bear you up. See, my angels bear me up. So my circumstance, when my circumstance tries to harm me, y'all y'all try to harm me. My angels, oh Jesus, can y'all see this? Does this make sense to them? As my circumstances try to kill me, even in fact, when they are all around me, y'all go around, y'all go, go go around, go around. Even when they're all around me, my angelos. Oh, does anybody? Can anybody give God praise for their angelos? My angels are protecting me. All right, thank y'all so much. Y'all gonna get dizzy. I let my circumstances get dizzy because my angels protect me. God said it like this. He said, you are protected within and without. That means within your, your, your mind, your spirit, your emotions. There's angels. They encamp themselves around you. They protect you. Don't worry about the stinky stuff. It's necessary. There are nitrates and nutrients in the stinky stuff, but they can't kill you. They can't harm you. You know what they do harm? Weeds. Weeds can't survive that fertilizer. See, you strong. Your root system is deep. But weeds, weeds have weak root systems. You, you ever pulled up a weed? You know you can just pull it right out the ground because it's, it's got a weak root system. You can't pull a tree out the ground. You are a tree planted by the rivers of water. You are not a weed. But the, but the ugly stuff in your life is designed to kill the weeds. That divorce. The miscarriage, the, the, the layoff, is designed to kill the weeds. God was with you the whole time. He didn't forget about you. He was with you. His, his angels are encamped around you. Lest you dash your foot against the stone, they'll, they'll, they'll bear you up. But you got to go through this little excavation. And you got you to gotta get some dung around you. You wonder why you keep going through all this crap. 
That was good. God said, I put, I put it around you. Not so it could kill you. You don't know how strong you are. You didn't know. There's, there's people in here. I could stand you up and start telling your testimony about when you told me that this was the end for you, that you weren't going to make it, that you didn't know how you was going to get through this. Oh, my God. And look at you now. You done came through it. You survived it. You doing better than you was doing when you was with him. Oh, Jesus. You doing better than you were doing before the situation. I tell y'all all the time. I got fired from a job that I would harm myself if I still had. If I still made what I was making then, I would be mad. I would be upset with myself. But I didn't know that God was just dunging around my life. He said, no, I'm going to let you off this thing because if I don't let you off, you won't get off. I'm going to lay you off with a severance package. Use that severance package to put down payment on your new house that you can't afford yet. Do y'all hear me when I'm talking? Because I'm not talking about me. My life is an example. It's a model for you. Whatever God did for me, God is not a respecter of person. He's a respecter of faith. He said, I'm going I'm to I'm dig around it. Then I'm a dung around it. All the ugly stuff that you went through. All the, all the hard stuff that you went through. And you said, Pastor Dante, I'm never going to make it out of this. And I said, no, no, no. We serve a God that can get you through it. We serve a God that can get you over it. We serve a God that can get you past it. I, I'm almost, hear me right here. I, I, I'm almost not good at embracing you when you tell me something bad. Because in my heart, I'm thinking, oh, well, God's about to do something else. Oh, well, God's about to turn it around. Oh, well, God's about to fix it. Oh, well, God's about to lift you up, take you to a new level, take you to a new place. And you crying and I'm smiling. Because I, I seen him do it. 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 He has surrounded me with favor and blessing. So it doesn't matter what happens right here. I know he's going to protect me. So, yes, it's my responsibility. I talked about the nitrates, right? The nutrients. Also talked about the stuff that kills weeds and worms. Yeah, man. They can't survive. You, you ever want people, some of your friendships couldn't survive what y'all went through. It wasn't, it wasn't healthy for you. You hear me? It wasn't healthy for you. God said that wasn't, that's why y'all didn't survive it. Because it wasn't, it, it was a weed or a worm. It was trying to kill you. Maybe not intentionally. I don't think a worm intentionally tries to kill the tree. It just tries to feed itself. Some of y'all just been around people who just try to feed themselves. That's all they think about is themselves. Just, 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 can I eat more? I, just, just, I need more. I just need, I need more. And next thing you know, you dying. And God says, no, I got to fertilize that situation. I got to fertilize it so you can realize that, oh, Jesus. Because, because get this, all things are working together for your good. Y'all play some musical. I'll keep going. I'll keep going, man. All things are working together for your good. Listen, I came on my first day back to tell you it's working. It's working. It's working. I know it stinks. I know it's hard. I know, I know it's dry for some of y'all. It's dry. See, in the, in the, it's, uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to preach this stuff because y'all don't realize how the, the environments looked in places like this where it was, it was, it was completely dry. It would only rain like once a season for like three days and then it would, it would not rain anymore. And some of y'all have dryness in your life. That's all. You wonder why you're not growing. It's just because it's dryness. Well, Pastor Dante, how do I get past the dryness? I lift my hands in worship. 
I stopped thinking, oh, oof. I stopped treating church as a convenience. I don't got nothing else to do. I saw somebody post that. If you don't got nothing else to do, come to church with me. Wait, what? You're missing it. You're missing it. Whatever else you got to do better be mildly important. Because this is life changing right here. Some of y'all been in dry places. Hear me right here. Thank y'all, man. So sweet. Some of y'all been in dry places so long. You say, Pastor, I don't even know where y'all. I come here because my friend comes here. I come here because my mama comes here. I don't, I don't feel, I, I feel dry. God saying, this is the time I'm about to break up the follow ground. And I'm about to saturate you with my love. Saturate you with my peace. Saturate you with my kindness. Listen, help, let me help you right here. It is possible to live a healthy, saved life. I do it. Am I perfect? Heck no. Am I saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and power? Absolutely. With no equivocations. Do I trust God with my health? Yes. With my finances? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. Do he respect me more than even? No, absolutely not. He see the same thing. Blood. If that's you today, I, 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 I really, y'all hear my heart in this season. I want to take some opportunities to really pray for some people. Not just to have open altar call where you just sort of repeat some religiosity and you come to the altar. I want you to come to the altar. If you want to come to the altar, come pray. Some of y'all don't need nobody to pray for you. You know how to get it in. You, you can dig and dung yourself. But today, if you say, Pastor Dante, I felt dry. I felt like I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know how to make it through today. I don't even know what tomorrow's going to look like. I go to my job and I'm dry. I go to church and I'm dry. I don't even have joy dealing with my kids. I don't even have joy in my life. If that's you today, I want you to come to this altar. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God can start some excavation in your life. If you felt dry, if you felt like, God, I, I, I'm by myself. Nobody's with me. I'm all alone in this. And I don't even know if you're real. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this thing out. And I'm, I'm talking about, I need some honest people. Today. If that's you today, I want you to make your way to this altar. Come as fast as you can. Come as fast as you can. Come as fast as you can. I want to pray with you. Come on. And we can we can celebrate these people. Amen. Come on, come on. Get closer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is one of these. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. But but look at me. Everybody at this altar, look at me. Don't make this another altar experience. Walk away from here free. Listen, you got the power to walk away from here free. Changed. Delivered. Hey, girl. You have the power to walk away from here free. But it, it's up to you. God has already surrounded you with his love, with his peace, with his joy. But you have to decide if today I'm going to let him do the hard work of making me who I'm supposed to be. Some of y'all at this altar, your growth is stunted. You know it, you're supposed to be nine feet tall. You stuck somewhere around five feet because you haven't given it all to God. You haven't given it all to God. Some of y'all know you're in small buckets. It's time for you to turn over that bucket. Some of y'all have never really committed to a church family. Yeah, I'm going to deal with all this because you need, you need that fertilization. I don't want to deal with those people. God's trying to use those people to fertilize you. She made me mad. So come sit in my office. I'll tell you everybody who made me mad. God's using it to fertilize me. When I deal with you, after I finish dealing with you, I'm better. I'm better. Find yourself committed to something, somebody, some church home, some pastor. Some of y'all still sitting in your seats. Commit yourself to a church body. 
Do it, do it for six months. Commit. Throw all in for six months. See what God does in your life. I want you to get to the place where you're trying God. Listen to me right here. This, this is it. I'm done. There's a man named Gideon. God tells Gideon to go fight a battle. Gideon says, if it's really you, I'm going to go into my living room. If the rug is wet and the floor is dry, I believe it's you. Gideon goes into his living room. The rug is wet. The floor is dry. He says, wait, 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 wait. Okay, if you can make the floor wet and the rug dry, then I believe you. Some of y'all, that's where you are. You just keep trying God. Oh, if you do this, then I'll do that. If you do this, then I'll do that. And God says, I've already done it. I've already fixed it. I've already taken care of you. I've taken, I've watched out for you. I, I made sure your kids were healthy. I did everything you asked me to do. Now is the season for you to go back in. If you, then I. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven and heal their land. God said he wants to heal your land. But it's gonna take, a, it's gonna take some commitment from you. If you're ready for that commitment, do me a favor, just bow your head, put your hand up. If you can just put your hand up and just say, God, I surrender, God. God, I surrender, God. I surrender, God. I surrender it all to you, God. I surrender it all to you. I surrender. I give up, God. I've tried in my way. I've done it my way. I've done it my way. I've done it my way. I'm done trying in my way. I want to turn it over to you, God. I want to turn it over to you. If that's you today, it with your head still bowed and your eyes closed. I want to pray for you, but when you leave this altar, I want you to leave this altar healed. I want you to leave this altar free. In fact, I don't want you to leave this altar until you feel like you're healed in your spirit, till you feel like you're, you're healed in your soul, till you feel like you're healed in your body. I want you to trust God like you never trusted him before. And I'm going to pray for you. 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 But listen, God said, I already did it. I already fixed it. You're already healed. It's already done. Come on and surrender right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this young lady. I thank you for her life, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that she's healed, healthy, and blessed, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in her life, God. Lord, you, you're making her an example, God. You're making her an example to people her age, God. And they're going to say, Mariah, how'd you change? And she's going to say, the power of the Holy Ghost surrounded me. The power of the Holy Ghost surrounded my family, surrounded my children, surrounded me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, surround them now, Lord Jesus. Fix now, God. Heal now, Lord Jesus. Never bound again. Never bound again. Never bound again in Jesus' name. Surround it now. Never bound again in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, God, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We pray for healing right now. Healing in the mind, God. Healing in the spirit, God. Healing, Lord Jesus. Lord, for whoever broke her heart, Lord Jesus. She is healed right now in Jesus' name. She'll walk away from this place free in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. I give you glory, Lord Jesus, for your child, your servant, your daughter. 